Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Now, first of all, if you have been with me for a while or if you've watched one or two of my videos, I just want to say thank you. Yesterday, my channel reached 20 million views. Now, that means a lot to me because I've had this channel for 14 years, ever since I was a teenager. So that being said, again, truly appreciate all your support. So in this video, what we're going to be taking a look at, some of y'all wanted to see how two 4090s uh, render in Blender. Additionally, we're going to be taking a look at persistent data. Some of y'all from a previous video told me that uh, in 2.93, they released this thing called persistent data. That's going to kind of help me render a little bit faster. So we're going to be taking a look at that as well. Again, if you want to do the same exact test with your device, with your GPU, your computer, you can actually download this classroom scene right here and you can follow along and maybe even post what you get with your system as far as render time goes. So. With that being said, I just changed the resolution to 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p. So some of you all from the previous video were leaving some comments, you know, when you did your own testing and you saw that at 12 to 200 samples, you pretty much got the same, almost close to the same render times as my testing with four RTX 4090s, right? And it seems as though, again, it's not scientific, you are actually not going to start seeing the benefit of having multiple GPUs in Blender as far as cycle goes until you start cranking up the resolution and the sample count. So with four RTX 4090s, you and I were getting the same result for like 25 to 200 samples. But once you start cranking up that sample rate and resolution, now you're going to see the difference between one GPU versus four or one GPU versus two, what you're seeing here right now. So let's get started. I have, right now is 300 samples. Again, we're gonna put that up to 1024 right off the bat. We're gonna be using Cycles GPU, and I already disabled the system right here for Optics and CUDA. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. So what we're gonna do next is turn on persistent data because some of y'all wanted to see it on. So I'll go to performance here, and I'm gonna put it a check mark right here. According to some of y'all, this is going to speed up the render even much faster. All right. So here we go. I'm going to press F12 now. All right. So that's the first render with persistent data on. So what I'll do is I'm just going to click the window and I'm going to press F12. So this is going to be what we're going to be counting. So F12 and let's see how fast this goes. That one was like a minute five. All right. So this is going to be our second render. So this should be faster in theory. If you haven't done so, go ahead and check out my Unreal Engine 5 courses on ArtStation, Udemy, or Gumroad. Additionally, I have consulting service now, so hit me up if you have any questions or need help in your Unreal Engine 5 projects. It's about 86% usage. That's actually pretty good. So this is longer. This is taking longer. So it's like a minute 10 the second time around. All right. So it's minute 10, 1024 samples. I will save this because again, I want y'all to download this here. And again, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can download the image because the whole point of this test is not about how fast can you render something. I can render this in 0.2 seconds, but the whole point is how much time will it take for us to get a usable path trace image? In Blender, I just want you. I don't want y'all to think we're just trying to get the fastest render. That's not it. It's the balance. You know what can we go away with? So 1024, obviously, still a lot of noise, and we do have the noising off. And what I'll do next is I'm going to close this because now we're going to enable the second GPU, the second RTX 4090. So open this here and Akuda as well. I'll close this, and again, I'm not going to do anything else. Just press F12. And I'm going to bring that task manager back so you can kind of see the workload between these two GPUs. Here we go. There you go. One at 83 and one 93.68. There you go. They're about flip-flopping 90.90 now. So there it is. All right. So that rendered in 47 seconds with two GPUs. For a 1440p... 1024 samples, that's actually still pretty darn good. So I'm going to save this now. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half. 
And I'm going to put the noising on. F12. And basically what we want to see is with half samples, but with denoising on, how can we compare that to with no denoising with 1024, right? So again, we have two GPUs running right now. 47 seconds is what it has to be. So uh, there, okay, so there you go. 25.47 seconds with 512 samples with denoising on. All right, so let's save. All right, so what we're going to be looking at right now, this is the 512 samples per pixel dual denoised, and this is the 1024 dual no denoising. Obviously, without denoising, you're going to see a bunch of noise right here compared to the denoised one. It's a lot more pleasing. And to be honest, this looks really good. But what I'm afraid about is whenever I'm denoising animations in path trace mode, sometimes there is not a lot of consistency and it's ending up mushing the image. You're going to see a little bit of dancing in the reflections and such. But for stills, it would make sense for you to use the denoising because you're saving a lot more time in the render time. And to be honest, if it's just a still image, this, the denoised dual looks better. And again, this is just my opinion. I just zoomed out. You can get away with a de denoised 512 samples versus this one. Like you can't really t see the difference even on YouTube. But at the same time, I am providing this to you all to download so you can see it. And again, I'm going to say it again. I feel like we're so spoiled that we have all these amazing softwares that we can kind of use to create nowadays. Because right here, what you're looking at, this looks absolutely fantastic. So that's it for this video. If you are going to do this experiment, post your times in the comments below because I want to see how it compares with, you know, like a 3060, 3080, 4070, 4080, whatever you have, or a 2080 Ti. Uh, let me know in the comments below because, yeah, I'll be curious to see that.